I want to show you a 16 second clip that essentially highlights how the United States government duped us into a war with Iraq by lying to us about them having weapons of mass destruction. Saddam Hussein and his regime will stop at nothing until something stops him. Powell argued Iraq is deceiving the weapons inspectors. This was a typical American show, complete with stunts and special effects. Now it turns out that Iraq was right and we were wrong. And just a couple of years later, the Bush administration was laughing off the fact that after invading Iraq, well, it turns out Saddam Hussein didn't actually have WMDs after all. Those weapons of mass destruction got to be somewhere. <laughs> nope, no weapons over there. Maybe under here. <laughs> now the question is, what's the point of me rehashing this and showing you these old clips? Well, these old clips are important because those who fail to learn from history are doomed to repeat it. Now, as President Donald Trump considers tearing up the Iran deal, which was a peace agreement that prevented Iran from getting WMDs, Warmongers who beat the drums against Iraq then are now beating the drums again, this time against Iran. And surprise, surprise, they're using the same exact playbook that officials from the Bush administration used in 2003. Now I want to reiterate here that contrary to popular belief, the Iran nuclear deal actually does prevent Iran from obtaining weapons of mass destruction and we're able to verify that they are in compliance with the agreement since one of the stipulations of the deal was that Iran would allow the International Atomic Energy Agency to access its nuclear facilities regularly in order to ensure that they're actually not building a bomb. Now the reason why warmongers don't like the Iran nuclear deal is that it undermines one of their main justifications for wanting to invade Iran. They can't get a WMD, and if Iran can't get a WMD, well then, what reason do we have to invade Iran? But that doesn't stop warmongers and war criminals from rehashing these same tired tactics that we saw back in 2003. And since now this deal guarantees that Iran can't get a bomb, what are they doing? Well, they're just basically telling us anyway that Iran does want to get a nuclear bomb. Case in point. Tonight... We are going to reveal new and conclusive proof of the secret nuclear weapons program that Iran has been hiding for years from the international community in its secret atomic archive. We're going to show you Iran's secret nuclear files. You may well know that Iran's leaders repeatedly deny ever pursuing nuclear weapons. Iran lied, big time. After signing the nuclear deal in uh, 2015, Iran intensified its efforts to hide its secret nuclear files. In 2017, Iran moved its nuclear weapons files to a highly secret location in Tehran. This is the Shorabad district in southern Tehran. This is where they kept the atomic archives, right here. Few Iranians knew where it was, very few, and also a few Israelis. Now, from the outside, this was an innocent-looking compound. It looks like a dilapidated warehouse. But from the inside, it contained Iran's secret atomic archives locked in massive files. Actually, they're a little bigger than this, okay? A few weeks ago, in a great intelligence achievement, Israel obtained half a ton of the material inside these vaults. And here's what we got. 55,000 pages. Another 55,000 files on 183 CDs. Everything you're about to see is an exact copy of the original Iranian material. You may want to know where are the originals. 
Well, I can say they're now in a very safe place. Here's what the files included. Incriminating documents, incriminating charts, incriminating presentations, incriminating blueprints, incriminating photos, incriminating videos, and more. We've shared this material with the United States, and the United States can vouch for its authenticity. Now, as that criminal stood there and told you that Iran was covertly building a WMD, did that remind you of anything? Certainly when I watched that, it seemed as if he was using the exact playbook war criminals from Bush's administration used in 2003. Exactly. So what Benjamin Netanyahu is trying to do here is potentially bait us into a war with Iran in the same way that Bush's administration baited Americans and duped Americans into believing that war with Iraq was justified because they had weapons of mass destruction. And you won't be surprised that Netanyahu is one of the many individuals that beat the war drums against Iraq back in 2003 as well. This is what he had to say. If you take out Saddam, Saddam's regime, I guarantee you, that it will have enormous positive reverberations on the region. And I think that people sitting right next door in Iran, young people, uh, and many others will say, the time of such regimes, of such just bots, is gone. There is a new age, something new is happening. How'd that work out for everyone again? So you see what's happening here. This is a warmonger and a war criminal who beat the war drums against Iraq, and now he's doing the same thing again against Iran, because he knows that this will work. All that Bush had to do was tell us that Iraq had weapons of mass destruction, and Americans believed, well, you know what? I guess that is grounds for um, invasion and justifies us preemptively invading them. So Netanyahu sees that and thinks, well, that's an easy way to get the United States to get on our side. And see, this entire debacle is frustrating to me because rather than rotting in prison right now for war crimes that he has repeatedly carried out against the Palestinian people, this war criminal is trying to bait us into invading another country that didn't attack us, that poses no threat to the United States whatsoever. Now, let's be extra kind to Netanyahu here and assume that he's correct. Let's assume that... This evidence is credible, and Iran actually is building a nuclear bomb. Does that still give us adequate justification to invade them? Of course it doesn't. Because even if I personally think that the proliferation of nuclear weapons poses an existential threat to humanity, and nobody should have them, including us, well, even if Iran did get a bomb, of course... They wouldn't just automatically use it as soon as it's crafted, they would use it as a deterrent against American aggression. And if you're asking me whether or not I believe Iranian leaders over Netanyahu and the United States when they tell us that they don't want a WMD, I do. Because ask yourself this, how would having a nuke serve Iran if they know, one, that they'd likely get caught while they're trying to build it since the IAEA could find out about it at any time and sound the alarm, and two, they'd essentially guarantee that the US would invade them if they found out about said bomb. It's just too risky. So I believe them when they say that they don't want a nuclear weapon because that is the logical response for self-interested state actors who don't want to be overthrown. They'd essentially guarantee a ground invasion by the United States if the IAEA found out that they were building a bomb. So why would they do it? What incentive do they have to do that? It flies in the face of reason, which is why I believe Iran over someone like Netanyahu, who is a warmonger and war criminal, who will stop at nothing to make sure that U.S. imperialism continues. Because U.S. imperialism also happens to benefit Israel as well. Our interests line up with Israel's interests. So, of course, he wants us to do his dirty work. The only time we should resort to using the military for anything is for self-defense. Other than that, war is never justifiable. Support this podcast by becoming a patron at patreon.com forward slash humanist report.